Francis Key Che Guevara Porque o Che era só o nome dele né? Não era só o nome Good afternoon. Today I'm going to talk about the research that we have been doing in Cincinnati regarding cerebellar doppler velocimetry in killer rats with open spina bifida. We all know that studying animals in which neural tube defects can be induced constitutes a really helpful method to determine timing of in utero pathology and possible surgical therapeutic approaches. That is why, in order to do this, we use high-frequency ultrasound, which ranges between 30 and 70 megahertz, which will allow us the non-visualization of small structures in fetuses with a spatial resolution of less than 100 micrometers, which was the objective of our study. The objective of our study was to assess the fetal cerebellar oscillation through ultrasound in an open spina bifida animal model to potentially be helpful in the pre-surgical and post-surgical assessment of those viruses that will require fetal surgery for open spina bifida. In order to do this, we check the pulsatility index of the superior cerebral artery at three different embryonic stages in an open spina bifida rat model. As you can see in the video of your left, we produce the two main types of open spina bifida. The first one, the myelomino, myelomino meningocele, and in the video of the middle, we produce the other type, which is the myeloschisis, or also called myelocele. We also produce a different type of spina bifida oculta that in our study was the meningo cell, as you can see in the video of your right. This was an experimental control and blind study in which a total of 16 pregnant rats were gabbaged on day pregnancy number 10 with olive oil to have our control or sham group and with retinoic acid in order to induce open spina bifida, to induce spina bifida oculta, and another group of fetuses that did not suffer any neural tube defect. And those three groups were our three experimental groups. In order to do this, we performed high frequency ultrasound and Dopplers at three different days, as I mentioned before, day 15, day 17, and day 20 of pregnancy, considering that a normal rat pregnancy varies between 21 and 22 days. The analogy with the human uh, pregnancy will be that day 15 corresponds to 22 weeks of pregnancy, day 17 to 28 weeks of pregnancy, and day 20 with 36 weeks of pregnancy. In 1996, Professor Giancarlo Mari performed a study to compare, to assess the fetal cerebellar oxygenation in normal grown fetuses, human fetuses and those that were growth restricted. In order to do this, he checked the pulsatility index of the superior cerebral artery and established the normal values ranging from 18 weeks of pregnancy to 40 weeks of pregnancy. So we use his approach in order to identify the superior cerebral artery. In the first video, you will see that the first thing we need to do is to identify the circle of wheels. Um, once we identify the circle of willis, instead of paying attention to the middle cerebral artery as we usually do, we are going to pay attention to the posterior cerebral artery. Once we have in view the posterior cerebral artery, we slightly direct the transfusion caudally, and we will see the superior cerebral artery arising from the basilar artery, posterior and caudally, to the posterior cerebral artery. We need to remember that the main oxidation of the cerebellum is through three arteries, the superior cerebral artery, which is easily identified by ultrasound, and which is a branch of the basilar artery, and the other two inferior cerebral arteries, which are not easily identified by ultrasound. Which were the results? We assessed, as I mentioned before, the pulsatility index of the superior cerebral artery at day 15, at day 17, and at day 20. We ran a one-way ANOVA test in order to compare the pulsatility index in those fetuses that did not have any neural tube defect, with those that have a spina bifida oculta, and with those that have open spina bifida. Those that did not have open spina bifida, it has spina bifida oculta or no neural tube defects, either in the olive oil group or in the retinoic acid group, 
show a decrease in the pulsatility index of the superior cerebral artery along the pregnancy, which resembles the same pattern of the middle cerebral artery in a normal pregnancy. And this is due to the spurt of growth that the cerebellum has at the end of the second trimester and beginning of the third trimester of pregnancy in a normal human pregnancy. While in the case of those fetuses that have open spina bifida, we did not identify this decrease, this typical decrease of the pulsatility index, and we realized that on day 17 and day 20, there was a clearly a statistical significant difference between those viruses that have open spina bifida with those that did not have open spina bifida. Therefore, the conclusion is that first, open spina bifida produces an increase in the pulsatility index of the superior cerebral artery, second, this may be due to a mechanical resistance to the blood flow in the posterior fossa as a consequence of the hind brain herniation, it is the Arnold Chiari type 2 malformation secondary to open spina bifida. And this is important to realize because, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, this would be potentially a helpful aid in order to assess pre surgically and post surgically those viruses that will require fetal surgery for spina bifida. And finally, we are currently running the same study, but now in human physics.